Now I will show you how to make this traditional Norwegian sweater. Um, unfortunately, I cannot provide the pattern itself and the stitch numbers because I do not own this pattern. So, uh, but if you really like it, it's called Innsbruck and is from the 1968 Olympics and it's and it can be found online so this sweater has a boat neck and it has ribbing on the cuffs and on the lower edge of the body and uh, I will show you step by step how to make a sweater in this style. So I hope you like it. The thing I will do is to cast on for the main part of the sweater. Um, the part I will cast on now will be knitted in ribbing and for that part I use a circular needle size 3 millimeters. My yarn will give 22 stitches for every 10 centimeters or 4 inches when using needle size 3.5 millimeters. I will switch into that size later but for the ribbing it is very common to use knitting needle size 3 millimeters. And when I cast on, I just use, I make a slip knot like this and put it on my needle. This will be my first stitch. And I hold it in my left hand like this and just put some tension on the yarn. I use my index finger from underneath and up and I twist so I get a loop around my index finger. I take my knitting needle on top of the yarn, I move down to the tip of my index finger, up through the loop and I let it go onto the knitting needle. I pull a little bit but I don't, not too hard because then it will be really difficult to knit the first row when you cast on like this. So just index finger from underneath up, twist, knitting needle on top, move down to the tip of your finger, up through the loop and let it go and just slightly pull. So this way to cast on will give the ribbing extra elasticity. So you just keep going until you have the number of stitches that you want and I'll get back to you with the ribbing. Now I have cast on all my stitches and I'm ready to knit the ribbing. So I have my yarn end here, I will keep that out of the way and I have my working yarn on this end on my right needle. Before you start to knit, make sure that you have the edge underneath all the way around so it doesn't twist on the, on the needle. So, usually the ribbing is to knit one, purl one, and I will do that like this. When I knit one, I go from my side with the right needle, I stick it through the first stitch the first stitch with the slip knot is always a bit tricky so I go from underneath and up through the stitch like this I move to the tip of my index finger and I pick up the yarn and I pull it through the stitch 
and I let it go onto my right needle. When I purl, I start at the tip of my index finger, I move down behind the yarn and on my far side I stick my knitting needle through the stitch from underneath and up. I go back behind the yarn and pick it up and move it through the stitch and I let it go onto my right needle. So I knit again then I'm on, on my near side. I go underneath and up to the tip of my finger behind the yarn. I pull it through the stitch and let it go. Purl, opposite, start at the tip of my finger, go behind the yarn, up through the stitch, back behind the yarn again, so you can see it gets in between here, and then pull through the stitch and let go. So I will keep going this way and knit ribbing until I have the length of ribbing that is required. So if you get when you knit, when I cast on like this, when you knit, if you get a big gap like this, make sure you don't pull your right needle too much. To mend it, you just keep knitting the ribbing, but when you get your stitch onto the right needle, you do not pull. You just gently knit the next stitch as well and you can see now the gap is much smaller. And when you have knitted a couple rows it will be stable and you will no longer see that any gaps were ever there. So keep knitting the ribbing uh, for as long as your recipe requires and um, I will get back to you with the next step. So now I am finished with my ribbing and I will now just keep on knitting and before I start, this is the beginning of my row, I will place a marker here I will just use some leftover yarn and just I will get it under here. You can use whatever you find best but I always use some leftover yarn. And then this will represent one side of the sweater and here I have my knitting needle size 3.5 millimeters and I will begin to knit and I will knit all the stitches and when I'm halfway around I will put in another marker I have now knitted halfway and I will find more leftover yarn and I will put this one here as my second marker and this will be the other side of the sweater so when I have knitted the entire row I will have one marker on each side and this will be helpful later for when I start to knit my pattern and when I uh, start to assemble the sweater with arms. So I will just finish this row 
so that I have changed to um, needle size 3.5 millimeters and then you will continue to knit and you will start to add pattern if uh, the recipe you are following says that you should do that or sometimes the lower part of the sweater is only one color so I will begin to knit some pattern on mine and I will show you how I start to do that now I have finished the first row with needles size 3.5 I have uh, taken both my markers and I have put both yarn ends on the outside like this just so it doesn't get in the way when I knit but now I will always know where the beginning of my row is and where the middle of my row is and it's time to add an another color to knit pattern with the, the pattern I am knitting anyway so I will show you how to do that I take the second color and I put it back here and I take the yarn end and I wrap it around my thumb like this and this is because it will be easier to put some tension on it and to begin to knit with and when I begin to knit I with two colors let's just organize here first there I always take the bottom color which is this one no it's not I will actually have the blue as my bottom color just make sure you get this right the first time <laughs> bottom color closest to me and pattern color away from me and I like to hold it like this you do it in whatever way you like so it m might be confusing when I say that this is bottom color but you will see when I am when um, I have the finished result so I will begin to knit and I just do it in a regular way I just pick up the color I want so it's just like regular knit stitches only you switch between which color you pick up now I have knitted a few stitches I can let go of this yarn it's now secure through these stitches here and I will keep going and I will follow my pattern and uh, I will get back to you with the next step now I have knitted most of my pattern on my sweater and I want to show you what I was talking about when I mentioned that when I knit with two colors I always keep the bottom color closest to me and the pattern color away from me and I need to be consistent because if I switch colors when I knit the pattern will become uneven and not and and will not look as good and as you now can see I I hold the blue closest to me and the beige one away from me that makes the blue color dominant and um, as you can probably see that the beige color will get a little bit underneath the blue one so you see it's more narrow here the beige one and the blue is more bold so if I switched then the beige color will be it will be more on top 
I hope you understand what I'm talking about here, but in general, it, the beige one will lie a bit deeper in the knit work than the blue one. And second, I want to show you when you have long pieces in your pattern, like here, with the same color. I want to show you how to do to avoid avoid long too long yarn floats on the back uh, on the back of your work because it looks like this but if I just knit blue from here to here I will have a yarn float of beige that will be this long and it will be easy to get a finger caught in it when you take the sweater on and it's easy to to pull on it. So what I do when I have the my bottom color uh, in this long piece here is that I I just begin to knit and here I have the beige and here I have to knit six nine eleven stitches that's far too long so I begin and how many stitches you choose to knit is up to you I use three so I knit three stitches and when I knit stitch number four I go behind my other yarn I pick up the blue and I knit. And when I do it this way, I have to turn the stitch around like this afterwards. And uh, next stitch again, I knit just regular here from the front. And then you can see I have gotten the beige. I have attached the beige yarn in the back. So again, I knit the first one, it was, that was the first, and I knit two more before I go back behind the beige one on top over the blue and I knit and now it's turned you can see there are they angle differently on my knitting needle so I have to turn this one around and then I just knit regularly for three stitches one two three and there I have my first beige stitch again so you can see here on the instead of having one long yarn float from here to here I have three smaller ones now I want to show you how to do if it is the pattern color that gets the long float. I'm going to knit this part here with I believe it's 13 stitches in beige. So I keep the colors as I did before and when I'm going to pick up the one the longest away from me I begin as I did just by knitting Usually I do three stitches and then for the next one I go underneath the blue one and pick up the beige to knit it and the next stitch I go over again as usual. And then you can see I have attached the blue yarn here on the back. And then, and then that one 
was my first stitch again so I knit the second and the third and then I go underneath to pick it up and over again to attach it <coughs> now I twist the yarn around the blue so this is how you avoid long yarn floats when you knit with two colors now the body of the sweater is finished and when you are finished with knitting this part you just leave it on the needle and it is time to start on the arms.